Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Dear viewers and welcome back to Politics and Debate Inshallah today we're going to be discussing how to debate like our fifth Imam Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam Now Muhammad ibn Ali al-Baqir alayhi salam he needs no introduction he was the one who ploughed through knowledge and he has the honor of tracing his lineage back to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam through both Imams Hassan and Hussein, Sayyidi Shabab and Ahl al-Jannah Alayhim Wasallam. So to discuss some of the pearls of wisdom from this great individual is my esteemed guest, Dr. Zahir. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa So Imam al-Baqir Alayhi Wasallam, he wasn't just the master when it came to religion as such. He was a master of all academia. He was the master of science, mathematics, languages, history, psychology. We could go on all day. But there is this misconception that people are of two types of such. You're either the scientific side or you're the religious side. That science and religion are polar opposites. How can we how can religion and science be compatible? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala Muhammad wa alayhi wa tayyibin al In fact, it would be, um, oh, if, if they weren't uh, compatible, uh, religion, religion of Islam, um, if you like, is based on science. Mm -hmm. um, Every single aspect uh, of the teachings of uh, Islam uh, is there for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it isn't just we have uh, those teachings out of the blue for no reason. Every single uh, deed that we do, every single instruction that we have uh, is for the benefit of mankind. Um, and uh, for the welfare of mankind, mm -hmm. uh, regardless whether it's the daily uh, prayers, obligatory prayers that we do, whether it's fasting, hajj, zakat, the teachings, the economic system that we have, the political system that we have, every single aspect of the teachings of Islam is, has, has a, a reason and a wisdom. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, science um, can explain it one day or another uh, um, there will come a time probably science can't explain um, all the teachings today but one day science will be able to to explain uh, those teachings of Islam um, when it comes to e economy you will see that we have the best economic system um, which is for the welfare of the masses mm -hmm. uh, for the benefit of the masses mm -hmm. um, when it comes to politics, it's the same when it comes to every other aspect. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have <coughs> more obvious, they are, if you, if you like, less obvious, but they are, we have more obvious issues. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, fil wa fi We will show them their, our signs in the far-fetched horizons mm -hmm. and in their own selves. So when scientists look at the human body, and uh, how it functions and the various aspects of the human body, um, the, at least the physical uh, side of it, how the organs function, how the cells function. Um, uh, Allah wants to show his signs in, 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 these, in these cells uh, to prove his, his existence that someone designed these um, this system, this, the system of human body. Mm. Uh, and also on the other hand, um, um, if you go and study the galaxies um, and um, again scientists are perplexed at the enormity and the complexity of the system that we have out there and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that we will show them our signs both in the uh, uh, far-fetched horizons and galaxies and also within themselves and mm -hmm. their own bodies Mm -hmm. So science and religion, at least the religion of Islam I'm talking about, yes. uh, there is no distinction between them. 
Mm-hmm. That's wonderful. And it's a really lovely example that you've given with the human body. I, I remember sitting doing my GCSE in science in biology and um, looking at the different systems of the body. Like you have your nervous system, for example, you have your cardiovascular, you have your reproductive system, all these things going on in one body mm. in perfect harmony mm. and balance. And mm. subhanAllah, like, there has to be a creator behind that. You look at things like a car, for example, and you think, oh, wow, the person that made that car w- must have been an amazing individual. Like, mm. how great is the creator that yeah. made the human body that we know and we have and use today as mm. such? So, basically, like, I, I know um, before I converted to Islam, many Muslims, they would turn to me and say that there are many scientific miracles within the Holy Quran. And some individuals turn around and say, well, where? Because we can't see these things. Um, can you enlighten us on some of them? Um, we, we can. There, there are certain aspects, as I said, was to do with the galaxies. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about we are expanding and uh, <coughs> we have created the, the, the universe and we are expanding. Correct me uh, if I'm wrong, up until recently, people didn't know that the universe exactly. was expanding. And yeah. now they say mm. that uh, they are uh, flying apart, mm-hmm. basically, or they, they are, they are, uh, the universe is expanding. So that's something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi declared uh, as a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 14 centuries ago. And now in the, in the late 20th century or early 21st century, uh, scientists have um, recognized that. Mm. So there are various aspects of this. Or the <coughs> when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the embryo, um <coughs> again, science today has uh, uh, confirms what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, has said in the Quran, what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi said in the Quran 14 centuries ago. Mm-hmm. Um, um, there are various aspects like this, but <coughs> uh, the important thing that the Quran uh, and, and Islam came is uh, first and foremost to provide uh, dignity uh, for the people, to blow, provide a system where that system provides dignity and welfare for the people and to, uh, to encourage taqwa and purification of the soul so that uh, uh, this Islamic system delivers decent human beings. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and of course it's the duty of every single individual that they have to work on themselves. It's not autopilot, it's not something automatic. You have to work on yourself so that uh, every single individual has to work on themselves so that they become a decent individual as required by the Quran. Uh, uh <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he is the one who sent a prophet from amongst them so that he can he can purify them mm-hmm. so that he, he, he purifies them and teaches them the book and wisdom. <coughs> Uh, <clears throat> so this is the essence of, uh, of the Qur'an. And of course, it touches on, if you like, scientific, even though all of these are scientific, it touches on scientific issues like expand, expanding universe, mm-hmm. uh, uh, the fetus in the womb, how Allah created them, the stages that it goes through, so on and so forth. So it's very clear that the Quran is full of scientific miracles. I, I know myself, um, my, my personal favorite is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that on the day of judgment, he will raise us by the fingertips. Mm. And what he means by that is actually the fact that each of us, we have unique fingerprints. Mm. No two fingerprints are the same. Mm. And he's saying, I can create that in the first place and I can do that all over again after you pass That's away. Right. Like. Yes. Subhanallah, like that's that's just absolutely incredible. Mm. Now, with the character of Imam al Baqir alayhi salam, like he really was a scholar and a scientist within his own right, and he, many people came to speak with him and yes. debate with him. But one of the problems that he often encountered, and all the Imams of the Ahl al Bayt alayhi salam, unfortunately, they encountered this, is sometimes these individuals that would come and debate with him. Sometimes they were incredibly rude and insulting. I mean, I, I remember a particular incident where a man went up to the imam and called him Bakr instead of um, Bakr. Yeah. How did Imam al-Bakr alayhi salam respond to such comments? See, the imams of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and his uh, holy progeny, they uh, um, they were there. They are here for a for a purpose. 
and for a mission. The mission is to provide guidance to mankind, all of mankind, regardless of where they come from, what religion they may have, and so on and so forth. Um, so if someone comes along and starts insulting, whether it's the Prophet or Imam al-Baqir or Imam al Hassan, Amir al-Mu'mini, it doesn't matter. When someone comes along and starts insulting them, uh, they are not going to preoccupy themselves and waste the opportuni that opportunity by responding to them or trying to address that issue. So like lowering themselves in a uh, way. Lowering themselves, mm -hmm. or even if not lowering, they don't want to waste that opportunity. <coughs> mm. the, what they want to do is to try, at least seize that opportunity and provide guidance to the individual. Mm -hmm. So even if the individual starts uh, on the wrong footing and starts uh, uh, name calling or uh, insulting the Imam alayhi salam, he wouldn't, he wouldn't respond likewise nor would he lose the opportunity. As is, um, is mentioned in the books that when someone started um, uh, insulting the Imam and insulting his mother, uh, the Imam said to him, if what you have said about my mother is true, then <coughs> may Allah forgive her. And if what you have said about my Imam is not true, then may Allah forgive you. So he started praying for the individual who were, was accusing him and his mother mm -hmm. and or insulting him and having said that made that clear mm -hmm. and if you like set the scene of uh, uh, respect uh, and calmness he started addressing the issues that he, he wanted to debate and discuss with Imam al-Baqir so as I said they are there for a mission they are there for a purpose mm -hmm. and they're not going to be diverted by uh, and distracted from that purpose by which is the guidance providing guidance to mankind by insults and, and what have you. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the bigger picture, if you like, the Imams have. So we're, we're here to provide guidance uh, to humanity. And of course, we as followers, we need to follow in their footsteps. So if somebody comes along and starts uh, falsely accusing us of uh, things, then we don't really need to go to their level and start responding in that, in that manner. Try to turn a blind eye try to uh, uh, attract them by praying for them, uh, and then enter into the debate and discussion that uh, uh, aims to arrive at a conclusion mm -hmm. which hopefully will be a source of guidance for the other side. Mm -hmm. It's amazing that Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam, he was able to show great wisdom and patience in that situation because I don't know about you, you know, it's hard enough if somebody is rude to me, but if somebody is rude about my mother, yeah. it's, oh, it's such an awful it, situation exactly. to be in, wallah. Um, yeah, exactly, that's very hard and tre it, requ it requires on our part uh, a lot of training, if you like, mm -hmm. so that when we are uh, uh, placed in that situation, we don't lose our temper, we don't respond likewise, and uh, we um, uh, try to use the opportunity to uh, guide the individual. Yeah, for the betterment for the best. of everybody, basically, yeah. Um, one thing that I've noticed in the debates of Imam al-Baqir, like, particularly with atheists of this scientific background, he, he mainly uses the topic of reflection. He gets these individuals to reflect on the world around them and the universe. I'd like to know what what is the importance of reflection within Islam. Well, I mean, it's extremely important. We have in the Quran, "Afala yatadabbarun, afala yataqulun, afala yatafakkarun." Why don't they reflect? Why don't they contemplate the issue? Why don't they think about it? <coughs> so it's important that um, uh, an individual thinks for himself or herself. Um, you, you, can, you can give information, you can try to present an argument to an individual to a certain e extent. Um, you can't spoon feed them everything. Mm -hmm. um, so it is, ex and it is extremely important that in, uh, an individual, or uh, that, uh, they sit back and reflect and contemplate um, uh, the issue. Uh, okay, they get some, if you like, data, they get, they get the argument, they get the reasoning from the other side, from Imam al-Baqir or from the Prophet and uh, then the Imam or the Prophet asked them to uh, take some time, think about it, reflect, and um, turn it inside out, turn it um, all over, so that they can come with some sort of 
uh, justification for themselves. Mm -hmm. So reflection is extremely important. And as in the discussion, in one of the discussions that Imam Bakr had with, with an atheist, when he said, when he said, oh, I don't, I don't believe in God, he denied the existence of God. And he said, um, um, have you been uh, beneath the surface of the earth to see what's, what's going on there? He said, no. Have you been up in the skies to see what's going on there? He said, no. He said, have you been to the east or west? He said, no. He said, it's strange that you haven't been to these places. You haven't been underground, you know, under the surface of the earth or the, in the skies to find out, uh, or east and west. And yet you have the uh, courage to say, I deny the existence of God. Mm. Uh, that made him, hmm. He said, think about think. this. That's yeah. right. So this kind of thing, he basically tried to trigger him to think about it. He asked some questions um, uh, and left him alone. Just as the case with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was talking with a, with a Jewish guy and about Uzair, uh, which we discussed um, earlier on. And um, when he, the Prophet presented the arguments, he left him alone so that he could think for himself about and contemplated the issue. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. self-reflection is extremely important. So sometimes maybe if you're having a, an, a discussion with an individual, maybe you shouldn't push them too much exactly. as such. Like maybe yes. just give them a point and then just be like, okay, just think about this and then we'll talk later, inshallah. Mm. Is that's that right. what you're saying? That's, that's how we should be. Sh mm -hmm. We shouldn't expect to reach a conclusive uh, uh, conclusion, if you like, right on the spot when you're discussing. This is... This mm -hmm. is something which you don't usually get especially when the other side they have their own beliefs their own understanding and uh, and it takes time for them to turn things over mm -hmm. yes yeah, that that does make sense actually that's why i've never really understood it when individuals you know they've just converted on the spot as such yeah. like I know like if I was in a debate with somebody you know it would take a bit of time it took me a bit of time to convince me about Shia Islam mm. took me you know in Islam in general and mm. then like picking like which school of thought that that's I wanted to be part of yeah that's only natural mm. you it takes time because you need to sort of uh, uh, see the evidence think about it uh, go back and forth and that takes time Mm -hmm. especially when it comes to beliefs mm -hmm. yeah I think another thing as well is like with an individual like Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam like I feel like we as the Shias we've done a bit of a disservice to him as such like we haven't presented him to the world like not just as a religious leader but like could you just imagine if we really made an effort to present an individual like this to the wider world and showed them the kind of things that he said, the pearls of wisdom that he taught his students? Like, subhanAllah, like, don't you think that would change so many people's lives? Uh, unfortunately, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Mm. Unfortunately, we've done a disservice, the, the Shia, if you like, have done a disservice to uh, the Ahlul Bayt in their entirety, uh, mm. to the 14 Ma'asum. Um, uh, starting from the Prophet sallallahu um, uh, all the way to the last Imam, the twelfth Imam, um, is because uh, uh, we haven't really presented the teachings of the fourteen Masum, uh, the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu uh, to the people at large, mm -hmm. and we really have failed uh, in our duty uh, to do so. Mm -hmm. uh, we re by now uh, we should have. Uh, made that effort so that people know about the teachings of uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi um, Not only that, probably uh, a lot of the Muslims themselves don't know the principal teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi mm -hmm. to do with life, to do with society, to do with politics and economics. Um, so yes, we have uh, unfortunately uh, failed in our duties and inshallah we'll uh, use this opportunity to uh, encourage individuals uh, to search more about the teachings of the Prophet and present them to the uh, wider world, inshallah. I hope this conversation that we've had today, Dr. Sahar, has maybe inspired viewers at home, inshallah. But my dear brothers and sisters, please do stay tuned as up next, Sister Fatima is going to be discussing the issue of mental health, inshallah.